Why, hello there. It's just me and the world's best tasting vodka. What's up, guys? This is Off the Dribble. I'm your boy, B. Scott. We're going to do another episode. This is season three. My special guest, R&B legend, my boy. I, I got to tell you this qu real quick story. John B. I met John B. at Jeffrey Osborne Golf Tournament. And it's funny how, you know, you, you see people that you admire and you love what they do. I walked up to him and I was like, man, John B., what's up, man? Big fan. And he looked at me and he's like, yeah, me too. Man. Big fan. You know, I mean, it was it was so organic and so cool. Yeah, it, it, it was just, it was it was priceless. So, again, I want to introduce you, R&B legend, my boy JB right here in the house. Jay, Good to thank see you for coming, brother. Good to see you, B. Can't Appreciate wait to have you, this Byron. conversation with you. Talk about your life, your career your family, you know, just everything. Cause I know there's so many things that's going on right now, but before we do that, like I do with my guests, I got to have a little toast to you again. Thank toast, you so man. much for coming. Appreciate you having me. Uh, man. Oh man, please. Yeah. Bless. My boy Luke downstairs. That's we at the Neff lounge out here in El Segundo. If y'all don't know, y'all better ask somebody that okay. that's on fire right there. That's just a, so y'all know. Right, man. Now JB, this is, this is, Say whatever you want to say. You can say shit, damn, uh -huh. fuck, and then, you know. <laughs> we got it. I'm just saying, grown, everything on grown, this is good. You know what I mean? It's grown up in here. This is, gro right. this is grown up. This is grown up. Grown up podcast. Right. You know what yeah, I'm saying? for sure. So, Jay, we, we got to get right into it, man. You've been a uh, you've been in the music pretty much all your life. You was telling yeah. me earlier that yeah. your mom and dad owned a record store. <laughs> you know, so, That's so my grandparents. Your yeah, grandparents. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so tell us how that all got started, that you really got into the love for music the way you are right now. Well, man, born in 74, so, you know, I grew up in a real amazing time right right you know right. for music and um but having the vantage point of being a, a young a young kid with records all around him mm -hmm. because of my parents you know my grandparents um and parents giving me records as, as presents for right, birthday right. you know presents or christmas presents or holidays so yeah that being everything was centered around music in my family because right. all my my family was musicians you know my, my both my parents are are teachers of music mm -hmm. so my dad's a professor of music. I taught at the college, you know. So, and my mom's a pianist and she taught kids piano. So there was a piano in the house and, you know, I just try to tinker all the time. And, right, right. And I listen to records and try to imitate what I heard on the mm -hmm, record, mm -hmm. sound it out, play by ear. So kind of taught myself how to play. I didn't really learn, like, you know, it's funny having teachers, you think that I learned properly. Yeah, that, that, that you would think that your mom would teach you <laughs> right. how to play and she piano. tried. She she tried. She put music in front of me, and I I memorized it. Uh -huh. I, but I didn't know how to learn you know, how to read the music. So she's like, "Wait a minute, are you reading that, or did you did you memorize that?" Right. I was like, "No." Nah. She's like, "Go back right here." I'm like, "Oh, I can't tell you." <laughs> she's so you like, couldn't right. read music at the time. No, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. I was faking, but you know, yeah, fake it till you make it, that's man. Right, you know, and right. and that's the thing is, I I learned my way, which was by ear, by sounding out what I knew, kind of sounding write to me and right. um in that way i was able to improvise and come up with ideas on my own and that's something that my mom and dad didn't do right they were like right. what that's yeah so so they kind of went by the book basically yeah. and you just learn yeah. by feel and sound so to speak absolutely so where'd you get the silky voice though man oh, i mean man. is that mom is that dad i mean that <laughs> grandma <laughs> granddad who in the family had that silky voice like you got well my my grandmother sang in church okay i mean in terms of singing you know um that's where i can say it you know evolves from mm -hmm. singing in church um i learned how to sing properly in gospel choir in high school okay, okay. um i always loved we talked about it earlier when I met you, you know, at the uh, Jeffrey Osborne right. um, tournament, golf right. tournament, right. and with Johnny Gill there and right. Smokey Robinson. So many of my, I call them my, my pillars in in the found my foundation, you know, holding up my my style, right. you know, where right. I learned how to sing from, uh, Marvin Gaye, you know, uh, you know, of course Michael Jackson, Babyface, all these guys. But right. getting to you know mention uh, Johnny Gill as a specific person because that was close proximity both of us you know hanging out with him yeah, yeah. you know it was groups like new edition early on in like 88 when i really kind of the key kind of like turned and i figured i want to do r&b you know and as my style of right. music and because it, it just really i related to the message i related to the style of the music um just everything it was just i was hooked yeah so it was artists like you know uh, Ralph Tresvan, Johnny Gill, you know, their voices 
that really made an impact on me. And then caught on to Babyface later, you know, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and uh, those were the songs. My first cut my teeth for the first time learning songs, you know, chords and things like right, that. Right, right. Jimmy Jam, Terry Lewis, their yeah, chords, you yeah. know. That's like, that's why I know how to play the chords that I know how to play right. this day. And still, I think a lot of my style is really modeled after, you know, those guys, you know what I mean? Well, you know, it's funny because I think your style, and you mentioned some other, you know, the, the other guys that was at that tournament, you know, uh, when you talk about Johnny and Smokey, yeah, that yeah. style never goes out of style, though. Man. You know what I'm saying? R&B, you know, I, I still listen to the Isley Brothers today and Ron Luther Ice. Vandross. Those songs come on and come they on. never you go out of style. That. You know what I'm saying? That's like, so that, that's, you know, Luther. You, you, yeah, Luther, Luther is I like got to work on a with different Luther. level. Really? Yes. I How was to. that? I'm so glad you mentioned this, man. I'm so this is such a um a huge honor for me to talk about because, you know, while Luther was living, you know, we were at the same, you know, uh award show. It was Soul Train Awards and um we were backstage and I just remember, you know, it was Alicia Keys, it was D'Angelo, it was I forget what year it was, but he looked at me and I looked at him and he goes, I want to work with you, man. And I was like, What? Right. <laughs> me? <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, it just to meet his acquaintance like that and be such a fan, oh my God, let's make that happen. And then I, I had a meeting, of course, with Clive Davis and, you know, and Clive paid me the biggest check I ever got for producing anybody. <laughs> so big up Clive Davis, you know, and, um, and, you know, the opportunity that that was to work with, uh, to produce him and to write for him. Right. And he wrote the little bridge on there. He he, he wrote his part, and I had my man Babyface come aboard, you know, and help me out with the backgrounds. Right. So it was just an epic record. The song is called "Grown Things." Okay. If you haven't heard it, check it out. It's it's almost like "Get Lucky Before Get Lucky" because <laughs> we was on that chic kind of like vibe. I love get chic. lucky before you get lucky. Well, because well, you know how the Daft Punk and and yeah, Pharrell did yeah. get lucky with the jink, jink, yep. jink, 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 and, I, and jink, I love chic jink. too back in the day. That's chic, yeah. you know, Nile yeah. Rogers, you know, that's yeah. that pocket. So. We were on that. We was on that back then. That, 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 that was that like 2000, 2001, 2002, something yeah, like that. that chic vibe. Yeah. All right, now I'm going to go back to high school a little bit. I mean, <laughs> we didn't jump forward because now I I didn't know you got a chance to work with the, the unbelievable, the great Luther Vandross, which oh, I know, man. like you said, was an honor. Yeah. But when you were in high school, I'm looking at your, your, your bio, and I'm like, wait a minute, you wrote 40 songs while you were in high school yeah. and got discovered by giving one of the tracks to Babyface and they called you later and was like, we got to sign you. I mean, I, I mean, did it happen that quick, that easy? I mean, how did nah. that? Because I know, like you said, you wrote 40. So how did you get that to Babyface? And how so did like that I said, take? 88 was the year that it clicked, right? So yeah, I was, the back-to-back started... back year when we won it, championships. So I, I feel you on so that. My, so I got my, you. So look, we LA, I'm in L.A. Come on, I got to <laughs> yeah, say it. I'm right here. I got you. I'm right here. We right, right here. here. See, we right here. See? So, you know, we're winning at this point. Right. Like, my mentality is like, I got to win right now. This is all win right now. So the energy in the air is good, you know, in L.A. You know, we're feeling good. So... The talent shows are happening. I'm entering the talent shows. My friends are getting behind me for the first time saying, John, you can sing, you know, right, you should right. do it, you know? Right. So I started to really like, kind of like um, embrace the fact that I could um, imitate my favorite guys, the baby face mm-hmm. voice. I could do the, you know, Johnny Gill voice. I could do Michael Jackson. But in terms of having my own style, I hadn't really found that yet. Mm-hmm. I had just found how to, really um, sort of uh, try to master the textures of these mm-hmm. different voices. Mm-hmm. And I would sing for the girls, you know what I mean, around high school or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they'd say, mm-hmm. oh, you sound like such and such. Like, Damn, you sound just like you know? <laughs> right. And that was the biggest compliment. That was the beginning of, of really loving to sing. Mm-hmm. But at that point, I really hadn't mastered singing. I right. was really into production and really just um, using my voice as a tool. Since I could sing, I was like laying my backgrounds and you know, my parents were, they blessed me with a, a four track back in the day, you know, where I could layer four times, you yeah. know? Yeah. And so I had a keyboard, I had a drum machine. I used to make my songs and I just sat up there, like you said, 40 songs. If you're not, you know, you got to compile all your records and get them on the tape so you can shop them, you know, back then, cassette, CD, right, yeah, right. I had it, <laughs> I was ready. So yeah, you know, by high school, I was shopping my, my, you know, my demos all around Hollywood and, it was interesting because my mom kind of 
she helped me back for a year, I guess, in kindergarten. So I was 18 the year of my senior year. Okay. okay. So I was older than the other kids and able to write myself out of class. Legally, I could go <laughs> shop my CD down, you know, in Hollywood. <laughs> You and so, hold up. Wait, let's go. So hold on, hold on, hold on. my dad told me he said, said right senior year out of class. Senior year, my dad told me if you're not, if you don't have a record deal, this record deal that you're talking about, right, right. If you don't have that, you're going to college. If you're living in my house, so I was like, oh, I ain't going to college. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Let me get this record deal. Huh? I'm getting the record deal, and that's what I did. You know, I wrote myself the things that were serious to me. I almost didn't graduate high school because of this. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. I had some really cool teachers that were like, made me make up the tests and all that things. Oh, and I got my cool. D's up, my F's up to D's and things like that, or to C minuses even. I was, I was, I was all right. You know, I was good at English and things that were creative things. Yeah, and math, yeah. I had a tutor, so I was all right with math. But anyway, moving on, I did get a deal straight the, the senior year of, uh, of high school. You know, so it was interesting. I came back to my teachers like, what? You said I wasn't going to do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you, know? you know what? It's funny because I, I did that with one teacher that told me same thing, you mm -hmm. know, because I was like, you know, I'm, I'm going to the NBA. And they was like, boy, you ain't going to no damn NBA. You better you better come to class. And I was like, but I had most of my teachers were like, you know what? You you probably you probably will. You seem to be a very determined young man. But I had this one teacher mm -hmm. that was like, "You ain't going to NBA, so you better you better get your high school diploma and go to college and get a degree and get you one of them nine to five jobs." And I couldn't wait when I saw. <laughs> and I went back to school. I was like, "Where's where's her ass at?" What? And she wasn't there no more. You know, so I was looking for. I, wanted, I just somewhere. wanted to go back and say, <laughs> She's uh, what, "What'd her you head say right now?" Yeah, I was like, what, what, "What'd you say?" I just signed with the Lakers. You know, She's just got drafted, right traded now. to the Lakers, just signed. But, or she's saying, "You know what I there. knew." <laughs> she lying to all her friends about she knew. So that first album yeah. with Babyface, yeah. Bonafide, went platinum, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you got to be on top of the world at this particular point. You know, when you get a, you, first of all, Grammy you get a demo. Grammy nominated straight out yeah. the gate with Babyface. I mean, I, first of all, I didn't even expect him to be on that record. It was big enough that he was producing and writing the right, song right. for me. I was That was a dream come true. I had always modeled my production style. I mastered all his different layering of his drums. L.A., big up L.A. Reed as well for the drums too because he was half that program at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, that they, they were a production team just like Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. Right, right. I mean, I was paying attention to both of those sets. Like, what? What's he doing? What they doing? So, and Teddy Riley, you know, Dallas Austin, all that stuff. But um, Babyface particularly was the one that I really went in and focal, you know, put the focal point on and I was like, so, by the time we had uh, gotten to work together, it was sort of like I knew what to expect from the production almost. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I went in with my best, you know, uh, sort of, I really wanted to put the texture of his voice mm -hmm. on his record mm -hmm. because I felt like that would fit. And he loved that. He said, you know, I want you to show you influ the influence on this one. And I was like, okay, great. A lot of people, when they heard that record, they were like, I can't even tell the difference between the two the of two, you guys, yeah, you know, because yeah. I really try to stylistically almost match that tonality because I was, I had practiced it at that yeah. point. And that's what got me through the door. So it was like my way of paying homage, you know? Yeah. But I never intended it to be a, in a duet. I never went in with that expectation. Right. He was the one, you know, he's like, I thought he was demoing it for me. You know, to sing it like this, you know what I mean? Right. He's like, no, I'm putting my voice on there and leaving that on there. And I was like, we we cut it at his house. He had me down to his house, and I was living there for about a month with, uh, actually, with uh, Chili from uh, TLC. Oh, we, were, okay, we were working yeah. on the Crazy Sexy Cool album, and I actually produced a song on there. Um, helped uh, write. Uh, you know, I was in the room. I'm not gonna say what I did, but. <laughs> <laughs> it was a part of the Red Light Special record. You know wow. What I'm saying? So, you know what I mean? And then I have my own song with Left Eye that I did with her. We had our own little moment, man, me and Left Eye. Um, it's a song called If I Get Caught in Your World. Mm -hmm. You can see it, you can hear it on the internet. It's um it's on YouTube, you know what I mean? It's uh something somebody dug up and had a cassette or laying around. They were like, I'm gonna upload this. So I was like, I was, I was so I glad when, that I, out. when I seen it because it never came out. You right. Know what I mean? It was a gem. So Babyface. I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously he had so many different, you know, oh, yeah. talented people around him. Mm -hmm. But like I said earlier, you know, I'm an R&B guy. Has always been an R&B. Yeah. I love R&B. Mm. How was it for you? Because now we're talking again. We're, we're talking 30 plus years ago. 
Yeah. You know, and you're an R and B artist where most people that look at R and B are are black. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And you come in. I, I remember when I first saw the album cover, I was like, oh, that's a bad white boy. That's a bad white. You know, I was like, cause they cause just to the sound. I didn't give a damn about the color. I was just looking at I'm listening to the music. Thank you. you know Thank what I'm saying? So that that kind of crossover for you in that world, did you have mm. any any I almost want to say any pushback or any any resentment going on back in those days? I think because I was being welcomed like that by by such a legend, um <clears throat> it really it really, you know, excuse me, it really uh it made people kind of take that that feeling away. Mm-hmm. I mean, if he's vouching for him then mm-hmm. wow, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, it really was. If anything, they'd be like, "Damn, you sound just like baby." Yeah, right, right. I, remember I was on like his I damn was twin. On, I, yeah, I mean, which was fine with me. I'm the son of, right. you, know, can I be? you know. So yeah, um, that was like my father to the game. So yeah, why not pay yeah. homage to him? Right. You know. Um, and as a producer, he he taught me what I know now. You know, as far as how to, you know, just the techniques involved with um, making quality songs yeah. and songwriting. What an absolute um, master of songwriting in terms of, you know, when it's, when it comes to emotions, who can who can articulate a man or a, fe- a a woman's emotions like Babyface can? He's like the modern day, you know, um, Shakespeare of our time. Yeah. You know what I mean? In terms of like a, a modern day, uh, uh, you know, uh, poet or right. writer composer. Like so I got to give him his props, you know what I mean? Because hey, he's the, the he's the man, one who showed me what I yeah. know, you know. Babyface is a bad man. I mean, mm-hmm. when you can when you got millions of men listening to your songs, when you talk to, <laughs> when you telling the girl, I, "I'll pay your rent, okay, I'll, I, I'll buy you food," you he know, said I'll it do, all the first time that it yeah, got said, all like, that, you know, you know and men yeah. be like, "Yeah, I do that, I do that," you know. Yeah. I mean, he yeah. he was such a big influence yeah. in the music world on, I think for, for me on yeah. being more of a a, a, a man that's sensitive. Yeah, that's man that's the thing. Just able to cry, you know. We got to have this the humility, that, that you, stere- know. you know, that that stereotype of being tough and you know not allowing anything to affect us. I think he showed that it's okay to be sensitive and compassionate. I think R and B in general, that was the the M O of the early stuff was the you know that the 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 real theme and the real feeling that I got from the early music, the Motown era, even yeah. You know, and, yeah. Was that it was? This is the heart music. This is the heart and soul. The feelings, whether it be the pain the, or the joy, or, right? You know, right. or whatever, all the in between too. You know, so it was like just everything. And um, but the emotion is what it is. You know, let's get let's get to the real emotion. Mm-hmm. Of it. And um, yeah, so it's 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 beautiful to be a part of an era where we were really singing love songs. Yeah, you know, because it was okay to say how you felt and be as they say, quote unquote, in your feelings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are vulnerable, you know. Yeah, vulnerable. We're, we're, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna open is. ourselves up. There it is. You know what I'm saying? There it is. And when yeah. you said love and pain, you just hit me with you know Frankie Beverly and Maze. You know, I'm thinking about Joy them. Pain, Joy right and pain. There, yeah. So yeah, I, I mean, I, I want to also talk about because some of the people that you have written for, mm. you know, uh, after Tony seven, Braxton, Tony after Braxton, seven, yeah, yeah, uh, Michael Jackson. Oh my God. Well, I didn't write for Mike, but I got to uh, remix a song for him, which is the official remix of "You Are Not Alone," the song "You're Not mm-hmm. Alone," mm-hmm. Pick, picked by him, you know, and uh, is is the epic team, you know, at the time, and um, God rest Polly Anthony. You know, at that time, she she was uh, gave me that opportunity, and uh, it was it was wonderful to be able to work with his voice, but. To be able to write a song with Babyface um, in his living room for Tony Braxton, mm-hmm. come up with the I I start playing chords and he was like, "What's that?" And I was just like, "It's just something." He, he has this little recorder he would record ideas with, and he sat down right next to me. He started just singing off the top of it the melody for that song, which is called "In the Late of Night," mm-hmm. and it's got a whole orchestra on it, a symphony orchestra. Babyface went down to uh, I believe Japan and used. Uh, the symphony orchestra in Japan for uh, for that song. So I he he brought it back to me like, all right, well here's the song we wrote in my right, living room. Right. I was like, right. <laughs> with Tony Braxton singing it. I was just just moves like that, like wow. Like, I'm like like wow. You know, just to be um, a fly on the wall right. of an experience like that would be enough for me. Let alone I'm, you know, so yeah. Part. It was the yeah. biggest one of the biggest selling records for Tony. That that was her biggest album. Right. 
um, to date, which to be on the Secrets album is a pretty big pretty deal. Huge, it's the last yeah. song too of the album, which is, yeah. which is huge for me. Well, we, we've we've heard of some of the people that you've worked with. We've heard of some of the people that you admired back in the day. Mm -hmm. Who are some of the people now that you look at of, of this generation? That's a little bit old, you know, a little bit younger. Obviously, yeah. we've gotten older. Yeah. That you that you really got feelings for. That you really like. I, I like him or I like her. Man, so many. And you know, you, you just said her. <laughs> well, her yeah, is I mean, one of the artists. Well, her is. Yeah, yeah she's yeah, bad girl. And, she's and, bad and girl. that's and that's the thing. It's like that's artists like that write like that that get my attention first because I relate to the the effort mm -hmm. that it takes to be able to produce, you know, and write and make a beat and be able to play chords and be able to come up with melodies and stack, but you know, your harmonies and it's it's. It's a, you know, it's a talent. It's a trait. Right, it's right. a certain skill that you have to have. And so when I see the Bruno Mars and the Anderson Pax and you get together and doing projects like Silk Sonic, it just yeah, takes me back yeah. to the essence of why I even do music. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's first the music part. But then I love a lot of the um, newer textures of artists like Daniel Caesar. And, and um, I love, uh, I love, you know, Khalid. His voice mm -hmm. is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's so many different guys that are out right now that are dope. It's for me right now to kind of come up with it is, I mean, I've always been a, a Chris Brown fan as well. I love, uh, I love a lot of the, you know, the weekend. Yeah, I'm huge yeah. on the weekend, yeah. you know? So yeah, it's, uh, it's not really a lot of stuff that I don't like. I'm trying to just embrace it all, you right. know what I mean? And learn from it all. I feel, I feel you. Yeah. you. You got a chance to work with, and he was on, uh, I think it was your Cool Relax album. Yeah. Uh Tupac. Oh yeah. And, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know, I, I you know, like I said, I'm an R and B guy, but I like you. I listen to rap. Mm -hmm. I listen to blues. Mm -hmm. I listen mm -hmm. probably the only thing I really don't listen to is probably country. You right. Know, I, I'm I just I just you know, I can't get into it, country it, and once western. In a while, I mean, I I'll hear a uh, country esque thing or yeah, something. I'll yeah. be like, oh that's so funny. Yeah, 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 like that's not bad. But, but, yeah, but, but it's not part, it's not my it's not my thing. Not my thing either. Yeah. I, I'm not real into the blues because the blues is always yes sir, yes sir. Because the blues to me is always here's the music. But but for the most part, it's kind of a down. It's mm. always you know you you uh, you know the, the guys talking about you left me. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Right, it's right, right. My bad. Shot, you know my woman me left me. My my you know. So I I don't listen a whole lot to the blues, but you know R&B is my staple. But rap, <laughs> you know, you got a chance to work with Tupac, who is considered <laughs> and should be one of the greatest rappers of our our, our generation and our time. What was that like? Well, first of all, let me say. I just went to the exhibit that mm -hmm. they have downtown. Mm -hmm. And uh man, that's right. You know what I mean? I'm you know, I'm I'm praising God that he he has his his he's getting his flowers now, you know, yeah. as far as like for real, like in terms of like an exhibit like that. Um, first of all, to honor him like that because wow, what an experience to go and 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 experience that for myself. That's the closest that I felt to Tupac since I did the record. Yeah. Because I was, you know, just from his clothes being physically there to, you know, just the whole thing kind of is really emotional for me in, in a sense. Uh, I didn't want to leave the building. I almost mm -hmm. wanted to stay there just because I felt his spirit so mm -hmm. tough there, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Tupac was an amazing dude, of course. I was a fan growing, you know, you know, you know, growing up to his music, listening right, to right. it from since digital underground high school, you know, with Tupac on the you know, all around the world, yeah. the same song. You <laughs> That's know when I mean? he kind of made his big break, right? That there. was the beginning of yeah. being a Tupac fan. And then on the on the flip side, it was like you know, you know, all of that. It was I, I get around. It was you know, how do you want? I just you know, by the time I met him, it was how do you want it? Yeah. So yeah. he had uh, we had a mutual friend, and my man Bezo called me up, and he's like, "Man, Tupac want to meet you, man. You know, he's come. He said, come down. He, he's a fan of your music.'" I said, "No freaking way." <laughs> He's not a fan of my music, you know? And so he's like, nah, he is. So, uh, yeah, I went down to uh, the tu Tupac, uh, how do you want a video shoot? And man, Tupac was there greeting me, man, Mac who, it was Casey and Jojo from Jodeci there, you know? Um, Johnny J, the producer of Are You Still Down was there. And um, we were just chopping it up. And he was like, man, let me hear some beats. And I played him some beats and he started freestyling some of my beats. So I was like, kind of just going with the flow and singing with him, you know, and we were having a little moment right there. And then he was like, all right, I got to do this video. So 
He went and did his video, but he's like, man, we're going to work. And then two weeks later, guess who hit me up? Let's go to the studio. You know, come down to Can-Am Studios out there in Van Nuys, wherever it was. And so I was like, all right. Drove down there. You know, he's like, let me hear what you got. Played him my stuff. Then he played me his beats. And that was the first beat that he played me was Are You Still Down by Johnny J. Rest in peace. Mm -hmm. um, and that was like three hours later, we had a finished record, Are You Still Down? You know what I mean? He's just... Baby, are you still down? Yeah. <laughs> Girl, it's all right, yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> if y'all ain't heard it, y'all better check it out. Tupac and JB. Are you still <laughs> down? Are you still me? down? Listen, <laughs> we're going to come back with some more with John B. Uh, in a little while. We're going to take a few minutes, guys. We'll be right back. Black Widows are conglomerates of attorneys and investigators that have always been community-based. They started from a personal traumatic loss, and that has spiraled into a platform from human dignity and rights. When they say there is no chance, Black Widow will take matters into their own hands and will find a way to rectify the wrongs and produce positive results beyond any boundaries while also paying it forward. Black Widow handles motorcycle injuries, car accidents, trips and falls, all criminal matters, family law, workers' compensation, restraining orders, and all other legal matters. In an industry where money rules and basic given rights are overcome by greed, they strive to make it about humanity by repeatedly educating and informing the masses as to their rights. If you have ever felt that raging anger like you've been done wrong, that's the fire that fuels this team. When you're done listening to all the rest, call us for the blunt truth. Call 844-NO-CHANCE or reach out via our Instagram at blackwidow underscore investigations. When others say no chance, we're on your team. Welcome back to Off the Dribble. I'm your boy B. Scott. I am here with my boy John B., legendary R&B singer, brother, writer, producer, composer. I mean, the, the, the brother done done it all. <laughs> and when we Stop. laugh left you guys, we were talking about Tupac and his collaboration mm. with Tupac. I wanted to ask JB, you know, you got you got to know Tupac a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, what did you think about this West Coast, East Coast, you know, bullshit that was going on between him and Biggie that ended, obviously ended up costing both of those young, unbelievable artists mm -hmm. their lives? I mean, I didn't really know what was going on at the time because there just was so much hype behind it. I didn't really know what to believe, you know, in terms of like I was in New York, you know what I mean? doing business right, all right, the time. Right. Like basically living in New York, coming back to LA, being part of you know, the scene in LA. Right. All, so getting to have both vantage points mm -hmm. was like, you kind of put a lot of the bullshit to bed because right. you're like, nah, I ain't really hearing nothing about any of that except in the Vibe magazine and just, right. you know what I mean? All these different all little stuff, media, yeah. you know? Um, Big Up Vibe magazine, though. I love them for having me on their magazine. I don't want to throw shade. Um, it just was uh, the kind of thing where meeting Tupac, he was so cool yeah. that it just put all that to bed. I was like, wow, you know. And then I found out they knew each other. And I know what it's like to get into a, a tiff with your 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 best friend. Right, and, you right. know, somebody is like all of a sudden becomes your nemesis. And you're just writing battle rhymes of how in your life, you know? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah exactly. But at the same time, they're rappers. So it's like, it's like, what level do you stop? Um, especially when the hood, you know what I mean? Everyone's sort of like, everybody that you're you're representing is looking at you like, do you mean that shit? Right, Are you right. really about that that right, life? Like, right. you know what I mean? He's like, well, pff, it's me or him. You know what I mean? Right. And that kind of thing. And I, back in the 90s, we were so serious, man. We were so, we were so, as the kids say, in our feelings, we really were. We yeah. were really, we needed to put a lot of that. These kids learned through us how to put a lot of that, that tumultuous energy to the side yeah. and like say, yeah. okay, I need to chill and just not take life so serious. So like you see the kids a little bit more lighter, lightweight with it yeah. now yeah. with it, you yeah. know, in terms of like the, the energy is not so hard. We, right. we came out we gully right. with it, you know what I mean? Right. In the clubs and, it was clubs getting shot up all the time in the 90s. You know, I used to hang out at the Century Club here in L.A. So I would see Tupac come to the club, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, and hang out, you know. And um, so by the time I was working with him, 
it felt natural. It felt like an energy that was like, it wasn't scary to me or anything. It was yeah. more like he was looking out for me like, do you know who this is in the studio with all the other people while we were working? He's like, that's John B up in there, you know? And I was like, what? Because I, I heard him talking on the mic. Right, right, Like, right. shut up, man. You know what I mean? To keep it down. You know what I'm saying? That's John B up in there. I mean, he was showing me so much love, man. Yeah. Soon after I had worked with Corrupt, I had worked with, um, you know, Corrupt on a song I produced and wrote called Sunshine on his album. Um, and then Snoop Dogg followed it. You know, it was a lot of, you know, really uh, a lot of, my heroes in hip hop was right, like right. a goal for me in terms of like another, once I did that, it was like, oh, if I could work with Tupac, I want to work with Nas. I want, you know, and I did work with Nas. Yeah. We did a song called Finer Things together um, on my third album. And, uh, you know, it just, it just created this energy where I was like, I loved what it felt like to be able to produce a record, a beat, you know, and then have my favorite rapper rap right, on it. Right. It just was like, man, this is a whole nother. So before even that got popular, before the labels hated it, they didn't know what right. to do with that. Right. They were like, right. we can't play it on R&B, AC radio, whatever, because it has rap on it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And we can't play it on the hip hop because it's R&B. I'm like, put that out, man. You know what I mean? They, right. Mary did it with Method Man. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So why can't we? So, you know, I remember hearing Jody Watley back in the day with Rakim on her joint. Mm -hmm. Like, mm-hmm. Oh, that just sounds right, right? right? Why not have a rapper on an R&B record? I mean, to me, it's like always been that way. Yeah. I mean, from the from the point of Chic doing like Good Times, and then having Sugar Hill flip right, it, like right, right. you know what I mean? Like <laughs> Chic's good, you know, good Times about seven minutes long, but right? Was, you know, you Sugar party, Hill you took dance that all same, night. Because, yeah, you but dance Sugar all Hill night. took that same same, same beat. beat and just yep. flipped a rap on yep. top of it, so it was R&B and rap hip-hop yeah, yeah. you know so i felt like we always been part of the same thing yeah respected each other you know yeah. I, I agree with you on that one what about jay-z and i work with jay-z yeah, as well i, I know I, so how and was I, that and i meant <laughs> well thank you for saying it, i gotta <laughs> give him his flowers as well you know um and, and what that was to work with jigger man back in yeah, the day you know yeah. when, when he was jigger you know but he was jay-z but you know it was the beginning of uh you know it was right around reasonable doubt era you know like right when he was just so I mean, he was always seasoned, but I felt like I worked with this, like the most, like it just was the confidence was so evident because he came in, he heard the uh, the beat which I made, mm -hmm. which is called "Keep It Real" is the record. Um, it's on the Half Plenty soundtrack, mm -hmm. um, which was was you know one of um, Babyface's uh, and Tracy Edmonds' um, joint venture movies that mm -hmm. they were putting out at the time, along with Soul Food and that all those well, different that's right. things. They did do movies. Yeah, yeah, they were doing movies. So yeah, I was they were producing you know, songs and everything. Producing, else, yeah. writing for yeah. these, you know, these things were, were it was great. It was like yeah. a, a waiting to exhale kind of a situation yeah, yeah, with yeah. the track. We're trying to make a really big soundtrack for the for the you know for the movie. Yeah. So uh Jay Z got on the song and he came to the studio and also, I'm a big SWV fan. So I had Coco sing mm -hmm. the second verse of the song, which was just epic, man. I mean, we're we're there, we're in the studio, and Jay-Z's vibing on the song, and I'm just watching him. He's like, all right, I'll be back tomorrow, man. You know, he he listened for about an hour, just replaying it over and over. He's like, I'll be back tomorrow. He came in, no paper, nothing, and just went in the booth and just spit the verse, and I was like, yeah, <laughs> that's what the great ones like do. That. You know, that's what the great yeah. ones do, man. They it, just was, it was amazing, and and just to be a, a part of that, um, remember him in that in that sense of uh, you know feeling me, my right, something right. that I did musically, and then rocking on top was like it's just a, it's a huge huge honor if you're a fan of of him as an right. MC. Um, for us to blend our worlds is yeah. huge, and then let alone be a fan of SWV and get to blend with her sing with her it was kind of too good to be true yeah man. yeah One of those moments man. you see now since you brought it up you know yeah. swv and like i said I, i'm a big music guy always have been mm. you, you got to give me at least three or four of the best female groups of all time wow because i i mean I, I i got two or three in my mind right now but i want to hear my boy 
who do this well, for a living. Female, you said female, female groups. groups. So, so you said got, SWV. Well, we got to go back to where the, the inspiration yeah, comes there from. There we the, go. The Clark sisters, you know okay. what I'm saying? We got to okay. say the Clark sisters because they definitely inspir- inspired See, now, SWV. I'm, I'm going to stop you right there right, real quick because right. a lot of people out there that's watching this, they're going to be like, who the Clark sisters? Okay, go gospel. Go ass up. Go, that's what you do. They, the Clark sisters, like you said, yes. it was probably the first female group that was bad. Mm. I mean, I'm thinking of the song. <laughs> yeah, they were bad. Because I remember they, they did a documentary on them, and I was like, whoo, these sisters was tight. Okay, Clark sister, go ahead. Give me give me some more. Okay, well, I mean, and Vogue. <laughs> Come on. Mm. My first crushes, like, honestly, in high school, like, they were the before Destiny's Child. Mm. They were, you know, they were the, they were the, they were the my generation's Supremes. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and just, I don't know. Well, my wife is in the room, and I love you, babies, but you know, she I'll she, say it for you. She they were it. fine, too. They were fine, because I saw them, and I was like, damn. And then when they started singing the dance, I was like, ooh, shit. You know what I mean? I mean was cold-blooded. I mean, I yo, love them. So, I'm sorry. So, let's, let's say that. I mean, then that, then you, you know, you know we, we love you over there. You know yeah, that. She, you know that. She, but. she loves them, too. <laughs> Um, but I, she liked them too. She liked yeah, them both back in the she, day. Man, let me tell you, man. They so were, that, you but can't, you, you didn't gave me about two or three. So give me some so more. Three, I, I know you got okay, some more. So you said, uh, all right. Well, um, well, we said the Supremes. Yeah. You know. Yep. You know um, female, female. You said involved. You said Destiny yeah. Child. Really. Well, already. Destiny Child. You have to say them. Yeah. And, I mean, you know what an amazing group because we started together. You know, I mean, I was on my second album, Cool Relax, when they debuted. Okay, and okay. Uh, they went strictly, you know, straight plat- platinum, and we went on the road, and we went, you know, I remember it was Jagged Edge, we were, it was Destiny's Child, it was me, it was all on Epic wow. Records. Wow, wow. And I remember seeing, you know, young Beyonce, you know, singing her songs, and you know, all the all the all the girls, Kelly Rowland, you know, all the, yeah, you know, yeah. um, you know, in the very beginning, you know, when they were, you know, doing parties like the the Epic parties, like private parties, and they mm. were just kind of showcasing this new group right, that was going right, to come out and right. hadn't and released a record yet. And uh, not to like put myself in that, make myself look like that guy or whatever, but I mean, it is kind of like weird to think about them opening up a show for me, but it actually happened back oh, in the day. <laughs> they actually yeah, uh, were, were the opening act that um, performed before. Yeah you know, before um, me and I would go on stage and, you know, it's like, give it up for Destiny's Child. You know, that was amazing. And that that whole experience um, of watching a young group, you know, do their thing like that and start from such a, um, you know, I remember being in those showcases, you know, at 18 and doing mm-hmm. the same thing, being mm-hmm. in that same place, uh, performing for all the, you know, the people at the record label and going down and doing all, all, all the radio performances for all the different, you know, places you have to go around all the entire United States and do right. that. You know, and I was a young man, you know, and that, I think I was 19 when I signed my deal. So I totally related to uh, to Destiny's Child. Yeah, yeah. And watching them uh, blow up, it was like, you know, it was real. It was like, yeah. I, fe- up, right? I felt that, you know, that same sense of, um, of course, when, you know, everybody, I mean, Beyonce, the whole rise of her, I felt her you know, her grow and I was happy right, for right. that that growth and celebrating along with her all all through the, you know, the evolution of yeah. uh, of their careers and yeah. stuff, stuff like that. So, you know, yeah, we started to get anybody starts to get like genuine, like my man oh, genuine. genuine. You know, we still we love genuine. We're on the road together, you know, to this day, man. And that's my brother from another mother. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um we we're honored to be able to do what we do still to this day. And right, um, right. it's not about accolades and 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 you know you know, whatever status you want to put me at, that's which status I am. But I feel like we've we've been able to be honored in a lot of households and grow up with a lot of different people for the same reasons where people loved our music. Yeah, so yeah. let's let's not try to compare ourselves or be up on some ego stuff. Let's just celebrate and our enjoy. lives yeah. and, enjoy and enjoy at this point, you know. Yeah. Well, we, we left out one group and you mentioned them a little bit early anyway, TLC. Yeah. Oh, well, but, TLC I mean, we, is... We, yeah, we, we, we got to say TLC because... Honestly, um, they were sort of the first of their kind, mm-hmm. being a, uh, a well. We mentioned, you know, the combination of hip hop and R and B, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, and being able to really, really, you know, brand that that energy for the first time. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, Salt and Pepper was a rap group, 
That's so true. they hadn't really incorporated singing yet. Like, right, in, right. Entirely so, whereas like TLC kind of did that for the first time. That was yeah. amazing. You know, rest yeah. in peace. To yes. Girl left eye. Yes, you know? definitely. Love TLC back yeah. in the day. Uh, guys, we, we're going to, well, we, we got to bring up the, the, the fact that, I mean, we're going to talk about your your other specialty that we talked about off uh, uh, off camera for oh, a little yeah, bit, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> before, before we get into that, the, the all these nominations mm. that you got back in the day, mm. you know, six nominations, something like that. I, mean, <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know. Yeah, man. I think I it was like six nominations. Really I know I got it down here. So yeah, yeah. six. You got you got uh, nominated for best male singer. You got you received six Billboard nominations in 1998, uh, Soul Train Music Awards. Uh, nominated as best R and B artist. I mean, JB, man, you you've had a hell of wow, a career, don't brother. Even you know what I'm saying? Me, but you, like, but you've wow. had a, it's crazy thing, when you thing, remind me of that. Yeah, but I the can... thing that's a trip is you've had a hell of a career, and it ain't over. You know what I'm saying? I feel like you're still I just writing. begun right yeah, now. Yeah, you still in a different writing. Way. You're about to do another album. You're yeah. about to bring your other album out. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I just I, I love the fact that you've done so many things. And you're still as humble as can be. Oh, like the first me. day I met you, I was like, that's a good brother. I'll respect you know what I'm saying? And Look, and then the ride back to the hotel, you know, we, yeah. we kind of vibed. And like I said, yeah, it was yeah, such yeah. An, an organic ride yeah. because we just talked a little bit about this and that. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I've been a fan mm -hmm. for a long time. So well, likewise, this is this man. Day, man. Likewise, like I said, this, of course. This is an honor and a pleasure You're a for me. You're a staple in our house. My but, mother but, is geeking right now, for real. <laughs> Trust me, and my pops. Both. We tell moms and pops, hello. Lakers love y'all. Purple house, and gold. Man. You know, listen, we we didn't we didn't do well this year. We won't even talk about that. But we, next year we, we're gonna be. We right. just we, we live. Right. We just live for the the you know the the years of of uh, you know the family energy, getting yeah. around yeah. the couches together, sitting together in the same living room, yeah. watching the same tube, whatever it was. You brought us together, man. So thank you for oh, that. Man, thank years you. of, I, I, I of appreciate happiness. That. You know what I mean? <laughs> I appreciate that. I know that. they know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but I, listen, off camera, guys, we were talking about on my wife's actual birthday, the 26th of April. I went in the backyard and I cooked, you know, steak, potatoes, uh, vegetables. She made the salad. You know, I brought out the big old bottle of wine. We had a great time. And JB was talking about, so what kind of grill you got? So y'all don't know his... <laughs> His other talent, his hidden talent, is barbecuing. Tell us, tell us about your, your barbecuing skills. I mean, I love to, I love to cook. I love to eat. You know, um, got to watch you know, how much I eat. <laughs> we all, hey, we all at that point. We got to you know? watch. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, probably don't get to grill as much as I'd like. At least, um, well, we do a lot of grilling of vegetables too. I mean, anything that you know you can. That's uh, I, I love sea. I love grilling seafood. I love mm -hmm. grilling beef, chicken, anything, vegetables. So it's it's really fun for me to. Uh, I I like smoking stuff. Like I like burning wood yeah, and the yeah, fire and building the that, fire yeah. and using the different kinds of woods. So the mesquites, the cherry wood, the apple wood, the pecan. All so y'all hear this? Y'all hear this? Yeah, yeah man. No, it it all about. Works, hear it this? all gives a different taste to it. When you go to a restaurant, you know that's a fine five star restaurant. They're gonna cook it on some, you know a steak on either you know, on some wood or, right, or it's right. going to be, you know, in the oven or broiled or something. But, but yeah, it's, it's, there's a bunch of ways to prepare, obviously, you know, and, but I, I think that, uh, it's just something about watching the sun go down or, you know, being out in the sun on a sunny day and just cooking your food. Isn't it amazing? I no, mean, it's just the smells and just the music. I put some I'm music say, on. I do the same thing. You know, I put some music on. I, I, I put either smooth jazz or R&B. There it is. Bring my bottle of wine out. You know, I, I got dogs. So my my big old dogs be running around. You know, just chilling, looking to see if I'm gonna throw up some scraps, which I'm not. Right. Y'all ain't get, y'all ain't getting table food, so don't <laughs> right. forget about that. Mm -hmm. And then you know, her and I would just sit out and the music mm -hmm. going. And yeah. normally, you know, JB, when we're done, I'll you know sit outside a little longer, and she'll sit out there with me, and I'll have you know the rest, you know, another glass of wine, but mm -hmm. I'll go get a stogie. Yeah, you know, and I'll I have me a nice little cigar with That's me right. and everything, and and mm -hmm. and just enjoy the evening that's you know, it, with man. my wife and it, we and we just have so much fun it. doing that i love it it doesn't matter where you are too you can get a grill going pretty much anywhere right i mean you know it's really it's kind of there's something about it, i think that just goes back to just you know the earliest <laughs> primitive like <laughs> wait a minute, points of man like we gotta we gotta cook this yeah, food right. <laughs> sometimes you gotta catch it first right back in the day you gotta man, catch it first you know catch it cook it you know so but but putting it on the fire man i don't care if it's vegetables anything it just makes it tastes it's so good. Much I don't know. I like I like cooking food. Yeah. And my my wife is the seasoner. She's the seasoning. You know, she doesn't eat meat, but she can 
why she can season it perfectly yeah. like to the to the point where I'm like that was just enough how do you know how to right, right. balance it out she's like no I do I do that so that's her part and then all the, the kitchen usually is is her realm right, you know, she's, right. she's um, you know everything that's on the the pan right. you know, or in the oven it's, it's it's all, I, I'll leave it alone because she does her thing like, you like but, that, but the grill that. leave the grill alone she knows yeah. that's yeah. <laughs> that is that's your that's, domain that's daddy's realm, yes. realm right there yes yeah. sir yeah JB, yeah. if, if I was to, man, this this has been so so Cheers, much fun, man. brother. Yeah, this it has, has been man. so much fun. Uh, I, I want you to just kind of tell everybody. You know, we, I think we talked a little bit about it. You know, your upcoming projects, things that's going to yeah, be coming out soon. You. Can you can you kind of talk about that a little bit, real well, quick? Well, first of all, I've been on the road nonstop. You know, um, ever since COVID, you know, sort of lightened up, um, and we opened back up with everything. You know, I've been just nonstop gigging. And before that, I was always on the road so you know road has really kept me busy for the mm -hmm. last um however long it's been since my last album has mm -hmm. been out and uh, it's been about good six years i want to say yeah. so it's been a long long enough time of waiting um in terms of like for that moment where it's right and i feel like it's my my time again mm -hmm. it's my my season mm -hmm. um and now it's feeling like the season's coming. So, yeah. And in terms of having the time to complete an album, that's what COVID and all that time right. off really right. gave me right. was that freedom of being able to be down in my studio and finish these songs that, mm -hmm. you know, deserve the polish over and the, the right, you know, just all the, the attention that you have to give the music before you, you share it with the world. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we wanted to get some features on the album. I'm not going to tell you who's featured on my first uh, single, but is somebody major heavyweight in um in in hip hop, you know, and um it's another are you still down type of move, you know, like okay. like doing it with Tupac. So but um I'm so I'm super excited about that record coming out. We're gonna film a video for it. And uh like I said, I have a song featuring Donnell Jones right now, um, that's out called Understand. We have a video for that as well. You know, and it's it's been beautiful to be able to do the, all this myself. I'm doing yeah. this all independently. Yeah. So there's no um label behind it yet. Um, in terms of distribution. So, mm -hmm. you know, I have another song called Priceless that I put out and uh, it's got a video as well. Bring everybody up to date with what your boy looks like now, <laughs> what I sound like now, you know, and it's, this is we're celebrating 26, um, 27 years in the game. Yeah, yeah. And um, I'm producing and writing these songs myself. So yeah, just it's continuing that, uh, that, that tradition that we're doing, you know, I guess uh, trying to, you know, make these albums as fast as possible. But I feel like, you know, you can't rush, yeah, you know, yeah, this type of thing. The, time, the quality is, yeah. is really, it's evident when the people come back to me, they're like, man, I'm, I'm loving this record. You know, I'm loving what you did on this last one. Right. right. So I'm just trying to live up to that standard, you know? Yeah. That's a high yeah. standard, brother. Respect, man. Thank you, thank you so Listen, much. I, again, I want to thank my boy JB for coming by, brother. Appreciate Nothing but love for you. Continued success. Thank you. I know this year, uh, 2022, is going to be a fantastic year for you. Thank you. I'm looking Thank forward you. to listening Andy, and hanging out. You know, we, we got to get together. You know, we yeah. got to get the wires together. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get a grill. Come to the I, house I, and all grill, that stuff. Yeah, well, so, you know, me, you grill first or I grill first. It don't matter. We but can, we, hey. You know, we'll, we'll figure it out. Tandem, tandem effort right there. There you go. We'll, we'll right. figure it out. Well, that's for <laughs> sure. But guys, another episode of Off the Dribble with your boy B. Scott, my boy JB, R&B legend. Respect, R&B legend. So him again me, and just start looking out for his stuff. There's a lot of stuff going to be coming out by John B. And uh, man, this was such an honor. I, I really enjoyed this. This is a brother that I've known now for a little while, but the first time we've really got a chance to sit down and enjoy each other's company. So again, another episode of off the drip with your boy B Sky. Guys, continue to continue, excuse me, continue to watch us uh, on YouTube and other uh, avenues that cover a podcast here at Ness Lounge in El Segundo. One more time before we leave, me oh, and yeah. Jamie gonna salute. Oh, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Good, we brother. appreciate you. Respect. We'll see you next time.